So in this episode of Flats Class Television, we're actually fishing with what I would call the sensei of speckled trout fishing. He learned from the master, Dr. Jay Wright. I'm talking about Captain Matt Chipperfield. One of the, the facts of, of what I would say fishing or targeting these large trout is you have to be a student of celestial times, if you will. So fishing around those big moons, like the big full moon, the new moon, where you have a lot of water moving back and forth, and it really jump starts these fish. Remember, these fish are trying to eat as hard as they can because they're trying to support this volume of eggs they have within them before they drop them. So you're looking for aggressive, large trout. You've got to fish around those big moons, especially at the very beginning of the spawning season, because trout spawn from February all the way through September. But it's that February, March window that's the best. Ooh, yeah, that was quick. Hey, <laughs> smash that corky. Decent fish. Yeah. Good fish. Solid start. Boiling up. Yeah, I was hoping we'd have a good morning knowing that bad weather is coming later today. Yeah, it looks like it's going to get a bit blowy. Oh, yeah. These nice fish, fish are probably going to feed pretty good before that, though, feeling some of the pressure change. Chunky, that's probably these coming. fish are so fat. Yeah. Most of the guys who see our fish here, the first comment out of their mouth is typically how healthy they look. God, that's a big No broken membranes on their fins, yeah. solid color patterns, not very splotchy or, or rubbed up. Nice, healthy fish. This has got to be one of my favorite baits, though. It's a classic. It is a classic. A cult classic in some parts of the country. Oh, yeah. Texas boys live by it. Yeah. That water is chilly. It's been, been borderline around the high 50s, low 60s. <laughs> so when I talked to CA about this trip, I was pretty excited because it looked to be what we had some good trout conditions. We had some good salooner cycles in the morning and early afternoon. We had a good weather window to get out before it got windy, and we also had a full moon. So with the chill water, full moon, good salooner cycles, a good wind period, a good weather window, it was pretty conf I was pretty confident that we were gonna get some quality fish. I must, he That's must a better one. Willie Mays that one, man. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that was amazing. It hit the water, Smacked two it. twitches like that, and on the fall, before I could take a little slack out, he was on it. Happens a lot on top water. I like to tell people your first your cast is your first twitch. Yeah. When that plug falls out of the air and hits the water, that's your first twitch. Let it sit for a second, and if it's on the dot, they'll eat it. It sounds weird that fish would fall out of the air, but birds drop fish now and then. It can happen. Now they're opportunistic, these fish. Oh, it's a better look one. Look at that trout. Whoa, whoa. I mean, he just. She's a little angry. Hammered that thing. She's got a not, not too fat of a gut, nice and long, big head, but her gut is looking a little bit hollow. She might have just put out her eggs. Come on, baby. Yee! <laughs> yes, sir. Those are just beautiful fish. That is a gorgeous fish. Matt, they're beautiful. Yep. Healthy, That's healthy, every healthy. bit of 26 and a half inches right there. Yes, sir. She'd be a little heavier if she maybe just hadn't put out some eggs. She's looking yeah. a little light in the gut. Well, we're going to put her back in, let her have another shot. Come see me when you're 30. Yep. The dirty 30. Release over 20. Yes, sir. She's ready. There she goes. Awesome. Wow. That's amazing. That is an amazing fish. That's a hell of a fish. fishery, man. I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple more of those come in the way things are going. I don't think I'm going to move from here for a little while. I think we'll plug it up and go to work.
When you're targeting these big sow speckled trout, these, these fish that are over 20 inches, and in many cases, closer to 30 inches than 20 inches. They're looking for one big pork chop, one big meal. They're not gonna expend any energy at all to eat this, this lure. So you have to get into your head that you're gonna have to move this bait so slow. It's more of a rod motion and less of a reeling motion. You want the bait to move around, but you don't want the bait to move forward that much. It is painful to work that lure that slow, but you can't argue with the results. There he is. Yep, another good one. Night. <laughs> zing that, zing. That one there is angry. I'm telling you, when you when you that find them, just angry. keep working. That is an angry fish. They're here. Fish. CA, right when you hooked that fish just now, I saw another one push off about 20 yards off that fish. They're here. Oh, yep, another oh, quality. Trout. Looking mid 20s, lower 20s. That's a no, red. No, it's a red. First one of the day. It's a All red. right. They like the they like the corkies too. Good that buddy a, of mine. That was a hammer hit. What? That's why I said that fish is angry. <laughs> no wonder it's a bruiser. Yep. Good buddy of mine caught a uh, a flounder on one of these corkies recently. Really? Yeah. They're one of my favorite baits in Tampa Bay. This is. All I fished in the spring were corkies. Soon, soon as Mirror Lure bought the brand, um, that's all I wanted to fish with was, yep. was the corky. They're tried and true and tested. They work on everything. <sighs> gorgeous. Nice little red. Absolutely gorgeous. Got a deep gold pattern, mm -hmm. little blue tail, single spotter. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, man, this is, this is the one fish throughout Florida that you can always rely on for good inshore action on, on a variety of plugs. I mean, not only hard baits, soft baits, flies, I mean, it's what everyone chases. Top waters, twitch baits, jigs, you name it. <laughs> Cut my glasses. <laughs> yeah, we have a really unique fishery here in North Florida. Uh, it's an interdunal lagoon where I fish. It's uh, non-tidal for the most part. It's very shallow, so it's true flats fishing. It's about two to three feet deep in most areas. Uh, sometime in the inches, depending on the time of year, whether the water is low or high. Um, but it's really unique in the sense that we have a huge population of really good-sized gator trout and a lot of a lot of numbers. And even more unique is the fact that we don't have a whole lot of predators for these fish to be eaten by, such as dolphins and sharks, which tend to take out most of your large breeder-sized fish over time. So due to the fact we don't have a whole lot of those predators and we have a really shallow lagoon full of really, really healthy fish and a lot of bait, uh, we've got a really good gator trout fishery here. There he yep. is. Woo! Big trout. Big trout. Yes. Big trout. Big trout on the surface. Did oh. a headstand on the lure. Man. What wanted, an eat. He wanted that eat. What an eat. I just downsized. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, here, no. He's there. there. He's there. It just Woo! downsized that smaller lure. That was an eat. Oh, yeah. This one here is coming at you. Coming at me. Come on. There we go. There we go. What a trout. <laughs> oh, we're on the outside of the head. Oh, going to have to be hook. careful. Come on, big girl. Stay put. That's why she's fighting weird. Yep. Yeah. Need if you to need my help, one. let me know. I can hop down yeah, and help you out. Make that move to that net. Oh, one move. Come on, big girl. Stay on. Stay on there. This is a moment of truth Sheesh. here. Ooh. Oh, oh, in there. Mm. Got it. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a big one. Yes, sir. That is a, that is a toad. One. That's a big one. Mm. Let me open the bale. I just switched to that, that other rod that had the smaller lure on Look it. Look at the head on that fish. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. my button right Barely there. Barely hooked. Just so you guys can see real quick. Look at the size of that fish. That is a toad. <laughs> Look at the head on her. That is a beautiful fish. Gorgeous. Yep. Excellent fish. What an eat, too. What an eat. <laughs> Crazy. Blew up on the I surface, did some headstands, head throws. Got a little bit of everything on that one. All right, we're going to make sure she's solid. God, that's a big fish. I still get excited about catching them like that. This is, this is never going to get old. I still get excited about catching them that size. If, you're, if your blood doesn't get pumping after an eat like that and a fish of this size, then you probably need to pick a different sport. Yeah. Well, and that was the downsized bait. 
All right, yep. I'm, I'm gonna get her out of the net and I'm gonna put her in the water. Woo! Out of there. Off she goes. What a fish. Matt, that was that was a hero. Well done, CA. That was a hero. That was that was an eat. You won't get any complaints out of me about catching <laughs> them like that. That's oh, that's man. a memorable fish. I like seeing them that way. And that's why we do the yes, release sir. over 20. Release over 20. Keep that population healthy. Everybody yep. gets more big fish. Everybody wins. That's right. That's why you and I do the release over 20, because it matters. Woo! So guys, today the breakdown of the tackle that we use with Captain Matt Chipperfield over there in Northeast Florida is pretty straightforward. Now, a lot of us when we're targeting these big trout want to throw big topwater plugs and in certain instances that works well. But we wanted to focus on big suspending baits. So here's what I've got for you. The ones that I like to start off with typically are the Paul Brown Original or the Paul Brown Softine in the XL size. These are fantastic lures for big trout. They slow moving. Even though they're not natural in appearance, the way they move is very natural to a stunned or cold stunned bait fish. So they do a good job. The one that did it for us the best though, was the Fat Boy Profile, which is a little bit larger. And you'll notice how we bent the tail down. This tail, when you buy it in the package, is typically straight, you know, as straight as an arrow. But we bent that down and bent the nose down because you can customize these pieces so that it will dart down a little bit because I was fishing a few of the deeper zones. Now, this particular color is called Plum Nasty, which looks a lot like the dark and stormy colors that we have at Flats Class Baits and Tackle. So it's a color that I have a lot of confidence in and it really did the job. I almost think it does a fantastic job of mimicking smaller trout where the bigger trout will cannibalize them. Let's talk about the delivery system for fishing for these big trout. I still want a parabolic rod, so I'm gonna want a rod that's in the medium action. Uh, something in a seven foot length that gives me both distance and accuracy. Uh, I chose the Terramar. This is the Terramar Double X. Uh, this rod has a lot of great fish fighting features, but it is deadly accurate because of just the way this thing is made. Um, this is the seven foot medium action model. This is the TXE uh, S70M. And I'll show you a tight here of all the specs. I mated that up with the Stratic. This is the Stratic. Um, 3000 XG, if you look right here. Um, the Stratic reels are just the workhorse of our industry. Uh, as a guide, I'm using Stratics all the time with my clientele. Uh, solid reel setup. I packed it full of 10 pound. This is Power Pro Super Slick V2. Uh, and at the business end, before you get to the plum nasty here, I've got about four and a half feet of 15 pound to 20 pound fluorocarbon. I go back and forth with both of these rods. Uh, and what that gives me, it gives me a long, because I'm working this bait extremely slow, it gives me quite the buffer between the end of the braid and the bait itself. And when you're working the bait slow, you need those longer leader links. So that's basically the delivery system that got the job done today. I don't know what is going on in season 16, but every shoot, it seems like there's a serious weather system bearing down on us. And this show was no different. It started off so nice with nice blue skies and it felt kind of warm, just a little bit of chill because we were just coming off like two or three good days and this seemed like it was gonna really sync up nice. And then the morning of, 
you could see on the Windy TV app how the how the the little lines were getting closer and closer together. I was like, well, maybe we'll get this shoot done before the before the weather hits. No, no such luck. In fact, we had to endure the last two or three hours of the day. I mean, in painfully challenging conditions with wind that no one in their right mind would try to fish, but we knew the fish were there and that's what made us stick to our guns and fish it all the way through. There she is. There, there she is. That's all right. Be patient. It's just like you said it would be too. Got Super one. slow, yep. long pauses. Hit it on the pause. Yeah. Yep. So she gave you a couple head shakes there. Oh yeah, some good head shakes and trying to be easy with it. The nice thing yep. about the Paul Brown lures is the hooks are the diameter is not so bad. Nope. It hasn't come to the top yet, so it tells not me yet. it's a good fish or I got it just on the side of the head yeah. or something. I find a lot, it's either they immediately come up and throw if they get it real deep in. Or it's like this, and they kind of dog you, stay down on it. A lot of times you get those violent shakes and big mouth throws whenever they get it deep. Oh, That's a good one. Ho, 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 ho. That's a good one. Dude, this one here is going to be full grown. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> this one. Full grown trout. By our standards here, that's a quality fish. Not a monster, oh, yeah. but a quality one. Really? Sure. This is where you lose fish if you're not <laughs> yep. careful. This is where you got to get delicate. Nice light tip rod, some shock absorption. Yeah. Gonna Let try them to wear them out. Try to get the net under here in a second. <laughs> it's a huge trout. Yeah, that's a good one. Got that nice purple collar. She's a thick one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yes, sir. That is a big trout. Yes, sir. That is a Baldy big trout. Baldy fish, CA. Big, big trout. All right, Matt, that is that is a nice that's one a, there. That's a target species you right never there. Get you never get tired of catching those. Never. Beautiful fish. All right. See you, girl. <laughs> Come back and see me when you're 30. Woo! Get a little bigger. As the day went on, the wind definitely picked up. The weather turned, the front moved in, and things got pretty sporty out there for a little while. I was white knuckling the pole. CA was having some issues with the line moving around, but despite those factors, we were still able to connect with a few fish by moving up against the bank, finding some lee side protection, and going to work. And we just put the baits in the water, pounded them, and we were still able to connect with a few quality fish, even during those pretty nautical conditions. There you go. There he is. It's right. a smaller trout, but trout nonetheless. He hammered that Paul Brown. I could see Angry. some mullet breaking on the inside of me. It's yeah. actually not that small. <laughs> it's a that's nice a, that's fish. That's a chunk. Not very that long, there, but it's a that chunk. One, that one there is freckled pretty good. Yeah. A lot different looking than their other one, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's still got a mouthful. Let's see if this one grunts at you. It might be a male. Yeah. Wow. That is a healthy specimen there. Hands wet. Good one. Good size mouth on that one. Yeah. Not a bad looking fish. Very respectable fish. Yeah. We get pretty spoiled in here at times. Trying to try not to uh, try not to become too much of a trout snob, but when you're catching pretty hammered sized trout on a regular basis, it'll turn you into a trout snob pretty yeah. fast. Yeah. But that is a, a respectable sized trout. In most other areas, some people consider that a big trout, depending that, on your fishery. Yeah. It, you show that to somebody down there in South Florida right now, and they'd be pretty happy to catch one like Absolutely. that size. Some of those guys haven't seen trout in months. Yeah. No doubt. And so the St. Augustine area that I fish in is 
really well known for some large, mean, nasty gator trout, and we have a lot of them. It's a great fishery for them. We've got a lot of bait. We've got good conditions for them. We don't get too much of a cold weather pattern where we get the freezes that will kill a lot of these fish. So we tend to have a lot of the large breeder sized females that make it to fruition and actually grow out their life cycle. So we've got a lot of large fish. We've got a lot of small stock coming up in the ranks. So it ends up being a lot of times on these good days where you can target these fish, you'll get a lot of them. So after meeting Matt up there in Charleston, where we did the Release Over 20 uh, event, which is a great initiative that him and I are both a part of, I only knew him on a professional level at that point. Now that I know him on a personal level, I got a feeling I'm gonna be spending a lot more time fishing with Matt Chipperfield. He's, he is truly uh, one of those guys that come from Dr. J. Wright's fold that I know that this guy is going to be one of the guys that are going to save that Northeast trout fishery. He's going to protect it, he's going to educate you guys, and I can't thank him enough for bringing me along for the ride.